My name is Santarawi Lalisan. I'm a champion in Tawi Tawi. In my day, I'd hold my breath for more than eight minutes. I push myself to do what no one has ever done before. In my head, I'm always wondering if I'll be able to go back up. I rely on God to restore my life once I return to the surface. I'm in a Badjao village in Tawi Tawi. And never would I have expected to find myself in such a situation. I don't know if it's still working. They are born swimmers. They are able to hold their breath while underwater with impressive ease. I am a true Bajau. My name is Giuseppe, and I have a mission to travel the world, to meet the most extraordinary people on the planet, and to ask them a simple question. What does happiness mean to you? Welcome to Project Happiness. The Philippine archipelago consists of more than 7,000 islands. It would take 20 years to visit each island. But one of these islands, probably the furthest from the tourist spotlight, it's worth exploring for AM up close and personal look at one of the world's most unique tribes, the Badjao. Due to their extremely pacifist nature, over the centuries the Badjao have always tried to distance themselves from the mainland, and the bloody wars fought to conquer them. For this reason, it was in the sea that the Badjao saw the possibility of creating their own world. A habitat that was incredibly hostile to others became more and more welcoming to them as generations passed, but not without enormous efforts. In fact, the incredible mutations over the centuries which have helped the Badjao survive life in the ocean have been studied, including how they developed superhuman diving skills that allowed them to hold their breath underwater for more than 10 minutes to fish. So I flew to Tawi Tawi, where the largest Badjao community lives. But what I found waiting for me was a reality quite different from what I had imagined. There's an unbearable stench. I'm in a Badjao village in Tawi Tawi, and never would I have expected to find myself in such a situation. What should be the village of the Bajau, the home of these warriors and protectors of the sea, is now a village drowning in a tide of garbage, full of plastic. This is due to its close proximity to the nearest city, Tawi Tawi, which has polluted the traditions and culture of a pure people, a legendary people living on the sea. It's not the same now. They're submerged, submerged, overwhelmed by plastic. It is really sad to see the situation here. Unfortunately, in recent decades, the Philippines has earned the sad title of the world's largest producer of plastic ocean litter, overtaking even India and China. The few Bajau who decided to settle near the mainland discovered all too late the catastrophic consequences of adopting modern conveniences in their lifestyles. But it wasn't always this way. Can you explain how it was before? This was a very peaceful place. Because at that time, there was no other blood here. No one else. Only Bajau. But now, we are mixed. Mixed, yes. So much plastic has accumulated because today, the Bajau people go to the supermarket and use plastic instead of paper. In the past, the Bajau used only paper when they bought something. Do you swim? Yes. Yes. Every Bajau can swim. Yes. Why? Because from an early age, we're trained to dive. Trained to dive. No. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've gotten a lot of attention. Oh, nice. So many of these children are telling me that they have never seen a white man like me. Hello. Hi. Oh. 
Wait a minute. In this frame, you probably missed a small detail, but one that makes all the difference. What you see in my hand is not just any water bottle, but rather an ingenious invention that is helping me to drink more water every day. It's called AirUp, and I'll explain how it works. Thanks to pods with various natural aromas, I can sense aromas from the pod while drinking. The aroma from the pod passes from my throat to the back of my nose, so it tastes like water flavored with my favorite fruit. But in reality, it's just plain water that I'm drinking. This way I am incentivized to drink more during the day, especially during my travels or when I am working at my computer and I avoid craving sugary drinks. And as always, I've put the link in the description with the discount code Progetto Happiness 10 to try air up and drink more water. And now let's return to the Bajau village. However, there is a group of Bajau who have decided to remain isolated from the modern world to protect their culture and traditions. Thanks to our intermediary, the grandson of the Bajau leader, we are allowed to enter their village of stilt houses. The village consists of a tangle of houses on stilts connected by a rickety walkway of bamboo poles and old beams washed up by the sea. It takes a lot of dexterity and balance to walk through them. And if I may say so, I'm managing it quite well. Wow, I can't believe it. <laughs> Is it working? I don't know if the camera is working, but I fell into the water because... Again. These... This board was loose. Sure, go ahead and laugh, but it really was loose. And after making the whole village laugh at me, to my surprise, I am greeted by the living legend of the Bajau, nicknamed the Fishman because of his incredible skills underwater. And he was apparently already waiting for me. You see, by the grace of God, they have come here. Thank God someone has brought him here. He has come here looking for help, and he can help us too. Do you want to know? Do you want to know my age? I am 85 years old. That is my current age. I was born during the Japanese occupation, but I don't know exactly when it was. My name is Santarawi Lalisan. My job here in our land of Tawi Tawi is freediving. I push myself to do what no one has ever done. I am a champion in Tawi Tawi. In my day, I could last eight minutes. Now I can dive for five minutes at most. Who taught you to die for so long? The one who taught me this was my father. Because he was also a legendary free diver. And he's the one who taught me that whatever happens underwater, I have to hold on. To hold my breath no matter what. In my head, I always wonder if I will make it back up. Then I rely on God and that he will restore my life once I return to the surface. In the sea, I find everything that I need to survive. I look among the coral and rocks for fish, and once I find them, I shoot them. With a spear gun and eat them. Let's take them fishing tomorrow. And we'll really show them how a bad jow fishes. While they're preparing all the equipment, I take the opportunity to visit their village. The bad jow village looks like an obstacle course because every beam, every piece of bamboo might not be nailed down and only they know where exactly is best to step. Meanwhile, I'm clueless and could fall into the water at any moment like I did before. We'll be careful. This is like their own personal parking lot. Each house has their own traditional boat parked here. However, it's interesting to note that they use a pulley to lift them up when they're not in use 
so that the salt water doesn't corrode the wood so much and the boat lasts longer. I'd like to tell you that I'm starting to feel a little more comfortable walking these planks. But then, when you see the children running around, it's embarrassing. And this is just their way of resisting. Living in the sea, in high and low tide, these stilled houses are perfect. Until it comes a typhoon or some tidal waves, as has happened before, which then destroys everything. But from ruin comes the resilience of the Bajau who always rebuild and choose the sea as the place they call home. Before we go out, the leader's grandson shows me some heirloom fishing instruments which have been passed down for generations. We use spear guns like this for fishing. This weapon here was built by my father. It was passed on to me to continue the fishing tradition. In the past, when our fathers went out fishing, we tried to be as attentive as possible so that we could learn from them, because even then we knew that one day it would be our turn to go out and hunt to provide for our families. That is why when we go fishing, for us it is a sacred time because it connects us to our ancestors. These are called kipara, and they are goggles much like something you'd see a swimmer wearing in a pool, not what you'd expect to see a fisherman wear. They are handmade, carved out of wood. The ingenuity of the Bajau is amazing. They manage to make goggles and to fish by hand underwater. I've never seen anything like this before. They are made of wood with the lens made from a bottle and a rubber strap. They look so fragile, like they could break at any moment. But apparently, they are also handed down as family heirlooms. The water is very murky, and Santrawi tells me that due to pollution, fish numbers are declining around here. And more often than not, they come home from fishing trips empty-handed. His gaze looks like that of a man now resigned to the idea that the world he knew no longer exists, and that the balance between man and the sea that the Bajau have always defended has been compromised. All that's left for me is to admire their legendary underwater abilities. Let's go and see how the Bajau swim. Okay. Let's try the Bajau's kipara. I would be surprised if not a drop of water gets in. Because they don't even have silicone to create a seal. Okay, let's go. Some water it does get in, but you can still see. They are born swimmers. They are able to hold their breath while underwater with impressive ease. And they move their feet, not by breaststroke, but pedaling. And in the water, they seem to have a fluidity, such ease of movement and incredible hydrodynamic, as if they were born in water. Look. Look at their feet. 
at the difference between mine and theirs, the difference is crazy. This is probably how all of our feet should look naturally, but wearing shoes makes our feet narrower. Meanwhile, look how wide their feet are, and they are practically prehensile, as if they were another pair of hands, and they're useful in water as well as on land, helping them balance on stilts. Look at the difference, it's nuts. Before we leave the village, I want to try to get a better understanding of what it actually means to be a Baja. What's your relationship with the, with the sea? I try to stay in the water as long as possible because I feel safe there. Meanwhile, being on dry land is much more dangerous. There are people and spirits who want to harm you. So that's why I chose to live in the ocean. Being in the water keeps me in shape. In the water, no one can bother me, unlike when I'm in the forest. On land, there are so many rules that you're not truly free, but in the sea, you are truly yourself. What does it mean? I am a true Bajau. I'll drink some water and then go to the sea. Before diving in, I take another sip of some salt water so as to feel at one with the sea. And then I dive in. Living with the sea is the only thing that can make me happy for as long as I shall live. Before I left for this trip, I imagined the Bajau being immersed in a crystal clear sea, an oasis of biodiversity and beauty. Instead, I met a tribe that is trying to maintain their identity and their tradition, despite being surrounded by the worst evils of our time, plastic pollution, poverty, marginalization, and no sign of protecting the habitat on which this tribe is dependent, not only for its identity, but also, most importantly, for its survival. In big cities, the consequences of our unrestricted economic growth are camouflaged by a semblance of material well-being. But here, in this fragile ecosystem and in the lives of these people, any imbalance is obvious and carries enormous consequences, since their happiness depends on the sea. Just as it is precisely in the oceans that our destiny as a species lies, intimately connected to the health of the big blue sea. If we do not take necessary action to protect the habitats that sustain these ancient communities, we likewise risk losing not only their age-old wisdom, but also the key to our survival as a species. Thank you.